All right, folks, in this video, I'm going to be showing some performance tips for the GPD Win 2. Um, I'm going to be talking about some of the settings that you would need to get the best possible experience from the GPD Win 2 since my review had a lot of uh, technical jargon in it. So, um, to start with, um, the first thing you'd want to do is you'd probably want to get uh, Intel's Extreme Tuning utility which is called XTU you have to download that and uh, install it and the next thing you want to do is you want to go to your Intel graphics settings now there there are videos that show how to do this so if you watch the other ones you can probably skip this part um, you go to your Intel graphics uh, control panel you go to custom resolutions, it'll give you a warning here. Uh, bear in mind that there are some newer Intel drivers which will not have this option and I would point you towards low spec gamers video on how to get those options. So, But if you're on the win as of right now, you can access the setting and it'll give you a warning message, you just click yes. And if my camera can focus, okay. So you see there's a list of resolutions over here that I've added, basically, um, where it says width, you actually put the height. Where it says height, you put the width. So it's opposite. So say you want 800 by 600, you will not put 800 by, oops, that's 8,000, sorry, 800 by 600. You should not do this. It's not going to work that way. You actually have to do it the opposite way uh, because this screen is actually a mobile screen which was rotated, so it's like a weird thing. So you basically type 600 by 800 and the last part is Hertz Hertz is always going to be 60 at least on the win so you just type that and then you click this plus button over here and done you're finished so you'll have a list of resolutions so these these this is my list actually this device came this way so um, I had this list and you can just see that and copy it and you know add it uh, so I already have my resolutions added. So once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to go to your general settings. Now in general settings, you'll see that you have um, resolution, refresh rate, maintain aspect ratio and all that stuff. So the important part is that when you are in your Intel graphics settings, you want to choose a custom resolution. Like I've chosen 1024 by 576 and you can keep it at 720p if you're not going to game you can just uh, go to your display settings which is over here right go down so if you're not gaming or anything uh, you can choose 720p where it says recommended up there okay but if you are going to game I would not recommend that you use this panel this entire setting panel do not use it if you're going to be gaming because what will happen is, if you choose this 720p resolution from this panel, it's going to disable all your custom resolutions. So you have to reboot your device and then do it from the Intel Graphics Center and reboot again. So I would recommend you just like ch choose settings that you want from your custom resolution panel in the Intel menu. Do not use the Windows menu. If you use the Windows menu, it's going to disable everything that you just did. So. Once you've chosen a custom resolution from your Intel graphics settings, you, what you want to do is you want to reboot your PC. So I'm just going to do it here because I'm going to go to the BIOS anyway. So while loading up, you're going to press the delete key. Just keep tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. Let's go. All right. So um, some of this stuff has been covered in Fox's video. Um, so if you know that you can probably swap well don't skip this part because you have to turn off the uh, intel's dynamic platform crap uh you you need to turn that off actually fox gave me that suggestion on discord so thank you for that um so what you want to do is this is your bios now be very careful when you're messing with your bios you don't want to fuck up and do something that's gonna one second give me a phone call Okay, back. So uh, once you're in your bio settings, what you want to do is you want to go down to overclocking and performance menu over here. So we're going to take this 
is the first step. So when you go over here, you can see I've enabled everything. Now, unfortunately in my BIOS, and if you have a newer system, if you enable XTU interface, it's going to like make your profiles not work and you'll have issues. It's not really useful, you don't need it. But the rest of this stuff, uh, make sure it's enabled. So under overclocking performance, you need your overclocking enabled and this yada yada, this is uh, enabled. So you forget about that stuff. And the other thing you want to do is you want to go to, uh, where is that? You want to go to thermal configuration. This is very, very important. Make sure you do this step. Go to thermal configuration and you will see DPTF here. So DPTF is enabled by default. So DPTF is like um, Intel's dynamic thermal platform system for tablets because this CPU was actually made for tablets, but the GPD Ubuntu actually has a full on cooling system and a fan. So you actually don't need this. You could turn it off. Your system may get a bit warm if you're not undervolting, but it's not much of an issue. If this is on, it's going to throttle your CPU up and down based on its own random readings of um, power and heat. You don't need this. You turn this off because your games will run like shit if you keep it on. Uh, so once you've turned that off, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to the chipset menu. So that's on the other corner right there. I don't know why this thing is not focusing or it has some kind of autofocus done on it. One second. Let's get this to focus right. Okay, it's not going to focus, but uh, I think you get the idea. So you go to chipset and under chipset, you just go down to, um, I think it's PCH IO configuration. And when you reach there, I think I've screwed up. This is not the right menu. Okay, you you go to system agent. You go to the first one. You go to system agent and you go down graphic options and un underneath the graphic options you will see graphics low power mode right there. So you want that to be disabled. By default it's enabled and that's what I I saw that in Fox's video. So it basically makes your GPU run in full power mode when you are on battery. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are other things you can do, but they're not that as necessary. So we can do that in XTU. So you save your changes and exit. All right, so now we're back uh, in the desktop. So I'm gonna assume that you already installed XTU. Um, and once you're in the desktop, all you need to do is go to your XTU. So I'm just gonna turn this off for a minute. Uh, XTU is not complicated. Uh, you just got to have a very, very tiny bit of knowledge about what you're doing. So the main setting, the really important thing in XTU is this, where it says core voltage offset. So core voltage offset basically means how much power your CPU is taking in while you're, you know, performing tasks. And CPUs vary, like the, the chipset varies from person to person, so some people can decrease the power needed to reach 1.7 gigahertz. Some people can't decrease it, but most people can do some kind of variation on that. This helps with battery life, it helps with heat. Uh, so it's very, very important that you sort of play with this. So in my case, I can go down up to minus, uh, so I can go down to minus 85 volts. All right, so that means I can decrease a certain amount of volts from my CPU power uh, requirement. And that really helps with games, it helps with uh, heat and battery life and everything. So this setting depends on your CPU. Don't straight away just go into minus 85 volts. It's, it'll just crash your system and you'll have to reboot. It's not gonna break anything, but don't, don't just go to 85. What you wanna do is you probably wanna try going in um, steps of five. So not steps of five, that's too less. You probably want to start somewhere with like, um, wait, I don't want, I'm sorry. So start, start with something like 25, right? Start with 25. And, uh, once you like put 25 set over there, you just click apply. And then you just click on the stress test app, click on the CPU test, over here, where did it go? Come on, viewfinder, and voila. So, when you click this, it's gonna give you a five minute test if your CPU is stable or not. If your CPU is stable, 
go ahead and decrease the voltage more. Now, some games will have issues with certain voltages, but we can fix that issue. So once your CPU testing is done and you're happy with your voltage, say your CPU is amazing and you can go down to, uh, you can get your voltage down to 95 or 85, whatever it is. Once you're done with that, I want to see where's the 85. Okay. Once you're done with that, what you want to do is save it. And once you save it, you'll basically have a profile. And your profile will be located in your profile folder. So you can see I have a whole bunch of profiles here. I have 10 watt profile, I have 12 watt profile. Um, the reason I've named it in this is along with that, you can also do something with the amount of wattage required by your CPU which is another setting that's right here. So this is also pretty important because it limits your CPU's power usage. Like what is the limit that your CPU sh should use while getting you know, its uh, core speed up. So seven watts is the base core frequency or whatever it is. And 15 watt is the illusionary ma maximum. It's not actually real. I think it should just go to 10 or 12 at most. So usually what I do is I, if you want to keep it at base frequency, most games will run really well at seven watts. You, you don't need to go higher than this. So what I basically do is I bring this down also to seven. Where you go? Okay, I've lost seven. I can't find it. Huh, whatever. So, uh, okay, so I can take it down like that. So what I would do is like keep it at 7.25 or seven, something like that. So I have seven watt, seven watt. Uh, this is basically how fast it reaches seven watt and this is the limit. So because I wanna conserve my battery life, I keep it at seven watt, seven watt. And then along with that voltage setting, I save it and it goes into a profile. And you, I have renamed my profile over here to seven watts. Wait, there you go. See, this is my seven watt profile. So anytime you load up XTU and you wanna just automatically get your settings done really fast, you just click on the profile like I did right there and you just click show values. Once you click show values, you'll see these yellow bars. These are the modifiers, the things you modified and you just click apply. Okay. so. That's, that's the very basic stuff. Now, you don't want to be doing this every single time you launch a new game. So what I would suggest you do is once you have a list of profiles that you've made, like 10 watt, 12 watt, 4 watt, you turn on, let me just discard this. You turn on app profile pairing, okay? So this is the next step over here. All you need to do is click this button and it's going to turn on app profile pairing. So when you turn this on, your CPU at its core, like at its base, when it's at desktop, it's going to be running normally. Like, you know, it's not going to be consuming a lot of battery life or whatever. It's just going to run normally as designed. But when you game, you can specify which profile applies to which game. So say I want to play Dark Souls 3. Now Dark Souls 3, I want to run this game at 30 FPS and I don't want to like use a whole bunch of extra power which is going to be useless. So basically what I would do is I would just click add profile. And when I click that, I just browse down and there's an option to browse. So I would just browse and I don't know if it's at the desktop or wherever it is. Oops. So I've clicked browse and right now it's actually in my DSX folder. So let's just take DSX for an example. So I would just click on the exe file of the DSX, wherever that is. It's usually in your Steam, uh, common Steam apps folder, or you can even do it from your desktop. And you click open and you see it says, oh, I don't think you can read it, but it says D, uh, dxmd.exe. It's like your main executable, your game executable, whichever exe file it is. So once it's there, 
all you have to do is choose a profile. So uh, for DSX, say I want 6.25 watts. I'll choose 6.25 watts over there. And now that is on battery. Oh, sorry, that's on AC. And then I'll click again, 6.25 for battery. So you have to choose two. Two meaning one for your on battery, one for on power. So once you've done that, all you have to do is pair. And I already have a pair. So once you have paired it, you can just go back to your menu just scroll back up to your menu and you will see it over here dxmd.exe uh, 7 watt yeah I chosen 7 watt so it will give you your profile tied over here now what happens is every time I load Deus Ex on my system it will automatically go to 7 watts it's not going to use too much CPU power it's going to be perfectly the way I want it to be so once you've done this close this um, you usually you want XTU running in the background so every time you start up make sure XTU is running in your taskbar menu over here somewhere over here so yeah so I already have Steam running and now I'm going to load up Deus Ex and I think I'll have to turn off the sound all right so I've loaded up Deus Ex now you can click on options and you will see over here it says 800 by 600 so this is not actually going to be 4 by 9 but because DSA Deus Ex has an auto 16 by 9 uh, scaling feature like it'll automatically make your um, picture going to 16.9 16 by 9 so you will have full screen but the important thing is that you have this option if you had not booted your system using the Intel graphics custom resolution set you will not have this option you will only have 720p option it'll only say 1280 by 720p so make sure the first step that I showed you where you go to Intel graphics panel select a custom resolution and restart your system do not use the display settings panel if you use that at least for this game and a few other games you will lose custom resolution so it's at 800 and 600 um, I'm using DirectX 12 it's not that big of a difference uh, it's a little bit more optimized the reason I'm using DX12 is because DX11 has some graphical issues in this driver so let's just load it up okay so we have DSX loaded up and it works pretty well as you can see I'm running around I could shoot some people it will work my weapon oh well no 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 that's that's wrong that is not what I wanted to do all right I don't have any of my guns for some reason I don't know what happened here but anyway so there's combat going on and I'm dead um, that's not what I intended okay here's a better level so I'm here I'm gonna try to kill this guy. This is not how I usually pay, play this game. Uh, well, sometimes when I want to play it as a shooter, I do. But what I wanted to show is that it works well even in combat scenarios. So let me just pause it and show you the options menu. So when you go here to display, I don't think you can see it, but let me try and focus it. Oh, this camera is shit well okay anyway when you go to display you are at 800 by 600 on your options menu and um, I do have double buffering on in vSync because it helps with the turning and stuff it doesn't get all stuttery I don't think you can see any of these settings but on the graphic settings everything is at low 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 off 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 so all the settings are at low so Deus Ex, it runs pretty well um, it's playable at least at that resolution so uh, these this was just a bit of info on how to get your GPD win to up and running um, in a relatively stable manner uh, if you like the video go ahead and like it if you dislike it go ahead and dislike it but as always thank you for watching